Dark matter is not even what we should be calling it. Because that implies that it's matter. It implies we know something about it that we actually don't. So a more precise labeling for it would be dark gravity. Since scientists started gazing back to the edge of the universe, they have stumbled upon many exciting discoveries. The arrival of the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, has taken these cosmological investigations to another level, raising the roof in the process. The most recent discovery emerging from the coffers of the JWST hints at the existence of another Big Bang besides the one we know. What clues did the JWST discover at the edge of the universe? Could there be a second Big Bang from an alternative universe? What would this mean for our age-long ideas about the universe? Join us as we explore the answer to these questions in today's video. Another Big Bang. From another universe. Clues found about the Big Bang at the edge of the universe. Nothing has gotten the scientific community so bubbling than the excitement of the sudden realization that there might have been two bangs. Shocking, isn't it? However, this is just the opening scene of this exciting story. Some scientists have hypothesized that we might have had not just two Big Bangs, but multiple Big Bangs. What's more thrilling is that some astronomers believe these Big Bangs occurred at different periods in history, producing their respective universes. These hypotheses have raised dust in the astronomical world as researchers have been forced to re-examine facts and discoveries and re-evaluate what they believe possible. These scientists are actively promoting the hypothesis that we have had two Big Bangs, where one of these Big Bangs is responsible for normal matter. The other owes credit for the mysterious dark matter. Many bystanders in this growing spectacle in the scientific world still cannot wrap their heads around why this hypothesis is coming up. The answer to this question is that scientists believe that this concept of two Big Bangs or multiple Big Bangs might explain why we have never seen non-gravitational interactions between visible matter and dark matter. This possibility has been somehow hard to swallow for many people when we consider the fact that we have all believed that the Big Bang occurred before the formation of the first set of galaxies and stars. This discovery is not just seeking to rewrite the history of the earliest periods of our universe, but the period before the universe was even born. For a long time, the world has religiously followed the explanation that the Big Bang is why we and the universe itself exist. The universe's story had begun with the explosion of matter and energy out of infinitesimally small and infinitely dense points before expanding rapidly to exponentially larger sizes. These activities formed the building blocks of the universe. However, thanks to decades of research, scientists have found out that a part of our world doesn't align with this history, and this particular category is known as dark matter. Hence the reason why some researchers believe that there is a second Big Bang, which has been dubbed the Dark Big Bang. Researchers at the University of Texas are part of this bandwagon, and they believe that this historic event occurred after the regular Big Bang that we all know. The researchers shared their views with the world through a published study. According to one of them, Catherine Fries, there is a strong possibility that the creation of ordinary and dark matter could have happened at different times. This growing ideology is fueled by the fact that we don't have any evidence of the existence of dark matter before the epoch of structure formation. Therefore, it implies that dark matter could have been created later by a second Big Bang, which occurred in the early days of our universe. Furthermore, we are only aware of the existence of dark matter because we have a full glimpse of the effects of its gravity. It is hard not to notice the phenomenon as it pulls on the things around us, so that we can't help but acknowledge its presence. Here's where the smoke rises to the roof. Since this is the only interaction we have seen, there should have been more if normal matter and dark matter were created simultaneously. This thought is better expressed in a statement credited to Martin Winkler, another researcher on the study. Winkler believes 
If such non-gravitational interactions existed, one would expect the hot Big Bang to produce not only the visible matter and radiation, but also the dark matter. He further explained that despite the several experiments carried out over the years, scientists have failed to detect any non-gravitational interactions of dark matter. We can almost picture the bewildered looks on scientists' faces when, experiment after experiment, they got no proof that validated what they were seeking. At this juncture, they came to the thrilling realization that if gravity is the only force between visible and dark matter, or that if only extremely weak non-gravitational force existed between them, there is no basis for the hot Big Bang to produce dark matter. However, they didn't stop here. They went further to draw up a new inference, one that has rewritten our understanding of what goes on in our world universe. The researchers concluded that there is an untold second Big Bang in the history books, and it may have produced the dark matter that we currently rave about. They believe this dark Big Bang may have created dark matter about a month after the hot Big Bang occurred. If we want to understand better what happened in the early moments of our universe, then we would have to start by picturing a burst of hot, dark plasma that later metamorphosed into dark particles. This picture mirrors that of the hot Big Bang that we have in our minds. The only difference is in the type of products created. This explanation from researchers has forced scientists to rethink the other phenomena we can see in the universe's early moments. More so, a silver lining seems to have emerged as some researchers believe it may be possible to test this theory in the future. Fries and Winkler share these views and are optimistic that this theory will become testable with time. The scientists have also revealed that they expect that the next generation of gravitational wave detectors could become strong enough to detect the signal of a dark Big Bang, provided it occurred. Gravitational wave detectors are an essential tool in gravitational wave astronomy. They are devices designed for tiny distortions of space-time called gravitational waves. Thanks to these gravitational wave detectors, scientists have uncovered discoveries that prove that the Big Bang occurred. However, one recurrent issue is that the current gravitational wave detectors have been unable to spot any signal of the presumed second Big Bang. But researchers believe that this narrative is bound to change in the coming days. Furthermore, Fries and Winkler have shared that there may have already been a signal captured by the nanograv pulsar timing array that hints at a dark Big Bang's direction. Nevertheless, they have also pointed out a possible alternative conclusion to this discussion. They believe that this theory may be disproven if any non-gravitational interaction is discovered between visible matter and dark matter. This is because such interaction would mean they might have been produced by the same Big Bang, thereby eliminating the possibility of a dark Big Bang. Whatever the outcome of this study, we would have to agree that it is one worth exploring. And since we are dealing with dark matter here, it is only fair that we exhaust all avenues. Since we are talking about exhausting all avenues, it wouldn't hurt to go back to the beginning where it all started. Sometime in 1929, American astronomer Edwin Hubble, credited for his pivotal roles in extragalactic astronomy and observational cosmology, calculated the velocities of distant galaxies. These galaxies were barely visible through the telescopes at the Mount Wilson Observatory. Thanks to this experiment, Hubble made observations that served as the first evidence of a theory that has become a foundation for modern cosmology. Hubble concluded that the universe constantly expands and didn't hesitate to share his observations. If we trace this expansion far enough back in time, here's what would happen. We would get to a distant point in the past. It is at this juncture that we would see that the entire universe was squeezed into an incomprehensible dense speck filled with subatomic particles. This distant point is what we know as the hot Big Bang. Since this distant point was determined, the question on everyone's lips is how this speck expanded and formed matter as we know it. There have been several hypotheses as an explanation for this question, as cosmologists and theoretical physicists have argued in support of their proposed ideas. However, in recent times, 
a once fringe theory has emerged and has gained traction in the scientific community. This once fringe theory, known as the Big Bounce, argues that the Big Bang may have happened before and may have happened again. The Big Bounce presents a cosmological model for the origin of the known universe. Those who agree with this hypothesis believe that the first cosmological event is a product of the collapse of a previous universe. Big Bounce models were supported by cosmologists such as Willem de Sitter, George McVitt and George Gamow. The Big Bounce theory describes the Big Bang as the beginning of the period of expansion that followed a period of contraction. If true, it means that we could live at any point in an infinite sequence of universes, or conversely, this current universe could be the first iteration. Although this theory received early support from scientists, it began to fade away when a new theory emerged on the scene. This theory, which arose to probe the origins of the Big Bang, is known as cosmic inflation. The cosmic inflation model was first proposed in 1981 by physicist Alan Guth. At the time, Guth was a newly appointed MIT professor who proposed that our universe grew from the most minor things that can be seen under a microscope to something greater than the entire observable universe within a fraction of a second. This cosmic inflation model describes a period of exponential expansion at the beginning of time and was proposed at the right time. This is because it answered several questions that physicists raised about the original Big Bang model. For example, this model proposed an explanation for why the matter in our universe, when observed at a grand scale, is evenly distributed. Nevertheless, this theory also rests on quantum physics principles that have yet to be integrated into classical physics. Guth also used the cosmic inflation theory to explain why the universe appears to be flat. And the answer to this lies in the extremely fast rate at which the universe grew. More so, this rapid expansion of the universe might explain why we cannot observe anything but uniformity in its energy distribution. From the theory, Physicists inferred that the magnetic monopoles may still be out there, but were formed too long ago and are simply too far away to find. Guth had been investigating why we are yet to see these magnetic monopoles when he came up with the early cosmic inflation model. The magnetic monopole problem, also known as the exotic relics problem, states that if the early universe were very hot, a large number of very heavy stable magnetic monopoles would have been produced. Cosmic inflation offers a possible resolution to this problem. Furthermore, cosmic inflation theory solved the horizon problem, which is the problem of determining why the universe appears to be statistically homogeneous and isotropic in alliance with the cosmological principle. If we are going to understand this problem, then let's look at this example. Molecules in a canister of gas are distributed homogeneously and isotropically because they are in thermal equilibrium. The gas throughout the canister has had enough time to interact to dissipate inhomogeneities and anisotropies. This is an issue in the Big Bang model without inflation because gravitational expansion doesn't give the early universe enough time to equilibrate. Furthermore, in a Big Bang model with only the matter and radiation known in the standard model, we would see something unusual. The two widely separated regions of the observable universe cannot be equilibrated because they move apart from each other faster than the speed of light and thus never come into casual contact. The emergence of the cosmic inflation theory helped to put this problem to rest when discussions of the Big Bang are brought up. Further research on cosmic inflation led some physicists to develop the eternal inflation theory. This model began in 1983 when it was discovered that inflation could be eternal. More so, this eternal inflation could lead to a multiverse where space is broken up into bubbles or patches whose properties differ from patch to patch, spanning all physical possibilities. Paul Steinhardt is one of the early proponents of this theory, and he argued that the multiverse represented a breakdown of the inflationary theory. 
Essentially, he said that the multiverse gave us a picture of how impactful eternal inflation can be. Nevertheless, there was no evidence to prove that the multiverse does exist, as the eternal inflation theory proposes. Similarly, for a long time, we have been unable to uncover evidence of another Big Bang. However, the story seems to have opened up into a heroic new scene with the appearance of the James Webb Space Telescope in the field of cosmology. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, is NASA's greatest gift to the field of infrared astronomy and cosmology because it can successfully observe the first stars and the formation of the first galaxies. This engineering work of art has thrown another exciting discovery into the laps of scientists. The JWST recently uncovered galaxies in the universe's early years that are cosmic breakers. These peculiar galaxies were discovered thanks to the high-tech instruments of the Webb Space Telescope. This discovery has given astronomers more insight into how the early galaxies evolved with time. The story has excitingly sharpened scientists' understanding of the fundamental processes that shaped the universe as we see it today. This story began when a team of astronomers decided to use the James Webb Telescope to go back in time about 12 billion years ago to observe the galaxies. Furthermore, the research team sought to understand the rules these galaxies followed through cosmic history. The team's scientific exploration was worthwhile because they soon found that the same set of rules consistently prevailed, connecting the rate of star birth to galactic masses to chemical composition. However, these rules only traced so far back to a point where it was discovered that the earliest galaxies defied them. We can imagine the surprise on scientists' faces as they gazed over the data the Webb telescope provided. It was not what they were expecting. When they observed the data further, they discovered that although the galaxies had a rule book they adhered to, it seems to have been rewritten during the universe's early days. Claudia Lagos, an associate professor at the University of Western Australia, is one of the researchers who came to this conclusion. Lagos revealed in one of her statements that the most surprising discovery was that the ancient galaxies produced far fewer heavy elements than we would have predicted based on what we know from galaxies that formed later. This discovery is novel to the scientific community because of the nature of the previous instruments used in cosmological investigations. The instruments used before the JWST weren't sophisticated enough to see and characterize the chemical makeup of galaxies as far back as 11 billion years ago. We should be grateful that NASA commissioned the James Webb Telescope, which is worth over 10 billion US dollars. Thanks to the JWST, astronomers could conveniently look back farther in time, making it possible to see what transpired within a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. It was during this investigation that they discovered a break in the relationship between star formation, mass and chemistry. After this first set of observations was made, astronomers had to ask themselves this question. When did things get heavy for the cosmos? This question was necessary because when the universe was in its early years and started to form the first stars and galaxies, it was filled with hydrogen and helium. These two constituents are the lightest elements out there, with hydrogen being the most dominant. Furthermore, only a smattering of heavier elements termed metals existed until the first generation of stars forged them at their hearts and then dispersed them through the universe at the end of their lives through the phenomenon known as massive supernova explosions. However, the story only began with this action because the next generation of stars incorporated this material into themselves. Thus, it meant that these stars, and in essence their galaxies, had a higher concentration of metals, which is also known as metallicity. This process of metal enrichment became a continuous activity and has persisted throughout the 13.8 billion years of cosmic history. This means that early galaxies are expected to have lower metallicities than modern galaxies. Nevertheless, the research team was a bit shocked to discover that the metallicity of the early galaxies is still lower than expected. 
From what they tell us, it is much lower than what they predicted based on the observations of later galaxies. Claudia Lagos expressed the research team's disappointment in the findings when she stated that the galaxy's chemical abundance was approximately four times lower than anticipated based on the fundamental metallicity relation observed in later galaxies. Another intriguing fact is that the research team stumbled upon more surprises as regards the early galaxies. According to the team, this disparity in the metallicities of the earlier galaxies and their modern counterparts may be because the galaxies, just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, could still have been connected with the intergalactic medium. This medium refers to the wispy hot gas and dust existing between galaxies. Lagos and the other researchers suggest that the early galaxies continually received new pristine gas from their surroundings and that this gas influx diluted the heavy elements inside the galaxies, leading to their low concentrations of metals. The team's findings could challenge the current models of galactic evolution and the mechanism that facilitated the development of the first galaxies. This sentiment has waxed strong with the discovery of six massive galaxies from the early period of the universe. From the data images captured by the JWST, the galaxies are pretty massive, and if we explore further, they could change our perception of the universe's origins. The data, which has grabbed the attention of everyone in the astronomical community, was obtained by the James Webb's infrared sensing instruments. The research team's goal behind the discovery was to discover what the universe looked like 13.5 billion years ago. In pursuit of this goal, they stumbled upon potential galaxies that were formed 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang and are surprisingly as mature as our 13.5 billion year old Milky Way galaxy. This discovery is pleasantly shocking as astronomers have sought an answer to the puzzle posed by this finding. Some astronomers believe this discovery proves the hypothesis that a second Big Bang also occurred. There is a possibility that this other Big Bang occurred right after the one responsible for the formation of our universe or that it happened before it. This is one nut that scientists hope to crack and finally lay to rest in the coming days. On careful observation of the data, scientists were intrigued to discover that the mass of the stars within each of these discovered galaxies is several billion times larger than the mass of our Sun. Furthermore, one of them in particular might be as much as 100 billion times the mass of our Sun. In comparison, the Milky Way contains a mass of stars equivalent to about 60 billion suns. This is why Erica Nelson, an astrophysicist at the University of Colorado and a research team member, stated, You shouldn't have had time to make things that have as many stars as the Milky Way. The research team had expected to see only very small young galaxies in the early universe. Since the discovery was made, the question on their minds has been, how did these galaxies fast track to maturity within that short period? In a bid to answer this question, scientists are unrelenting in their research. Hopefully, the result of these investigations might finally put to rest some unanswered questions about the existence of a second Big Bang. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.